Hey guys, and welcome to this 21st episode in the first Steps and Preparation series. Today we are going to talk about the compositor once again, namely about the um, color nodes, because the color nodes are fairly important. They are basically, well, you could even say, or at least to me, they are like the main nodes in the compositor. Um, so yeah, let's open up the same scene we used last time. And let's just rearrange this a little bit. Let's um, delete that field there. And let's also get rid of that one. Let's change to that over here. Okay. And now today we're not going to render anything. We're going to use an image that I provided for you. It is in the video description. Is There's a link to it. Um, because this image that we're going to load in is ideal for what we want to do. And um, yeah, it's important that we all have the same image. That was that was not important up to now because you could have used anything, really. And But from now on, it is actually important. And therefore, let's just, first of all, move the movie clip node to over here. Let's bring that one in the foreground. Let's put Control, Shift, left click, connect that to the viewer node. And now let's load in that image. Here we go. And that is the one. And ba by the way, this is also the final image um, or the final result from the first tutorial series we're going to make. Um, I just recently finished the scene and soon enough I'll start making tutorials on it. Um, so yeah, hope you, you stay tuned for that. And now let's talk about the color nodes. Now, <clears throat> first of all, let's just duplicate that frame. Let's move it over here and let's call it color nodes. Okay. And uh, the problem is that if I make that bigger now, then it'll actually um, keep us from seeing what we're actually doing on the image. And therefore, let's just, for now, move it out of the way over here. And now let's add in our first color node, okay? And you can see there are 11 color nodes in total, I believe. Yeah, exactly, 11. And with color nodes, you can basically do two things. You can either change the appearance of your image by changing the color or the contrast or hue or whatever or you can combine images with mix or alpha over or c combine and now let's take a look at rgb curves okay because they're fairly cool what you basically do here you manipulate the curve that maps the colors from and the values from the input image to the output image okay and um, you can see up here you can choose between combined red, green, and blue channels. Um, then here you have a factor amount, which basically um, defines how strongly this node actually influences um, your scene. So if you have that at zero, no matter what you do here, nothing will change, as you can see. Nothing changes. You have then up here a few things. You can zoom in, although I do not know how to navigate in here, how to do that, so I never use that. Uh, you can reset the curve, which is also fairly important all the time. Just delete all the changes you've made. You can do a few other things, more on that in a second. And then over here you can define the range, okay? Right now... Actually, let me first of all show you this. This is our actual curve, okay? So this is the input axis from the input image, um, the x-axis. And this, the y-axis, is the output image, okay? And right now, if I have an input of 0.25, which is a fairly dark color, by the way, zero is, is black or very dark, and one is fairly light, uh, very bright white. And same goes for over here, dark and white. And as I said right now, you can see um, 0.25 is 0.25, 0.5 is 0.5, and one is one. And therefore, nothing has changed. Let's put that back to one. But now if I make everything brighter, or if I move, move that thing to over there, you can see everything becomes brighter because now a value of 0.25 from the input becomes a value of 0.6 from the output for the output. 0.5 becomes 0.8 and 1 still stays 1. So everything becomes brighter except for the start and the end. Um, yeah. So that's basically how this curve works. Now, there are a couple of things you can do here. You can also make it darker, of course, or, or, or decrease the contrast to make everything darker at the same time. Or you can, or actually, no, that, was not, that was not really correct. This is actually more like a brighter and darker that doesn't really have a lot to do with contrast because the contrast does, 
um, contrast makes the dark values darker and the light values lighter. So if you want to make this like a con contrast node, just increase the bright tones and decrease the dark tones, and then you get a much more an image much more rich in contrast. It doesn't really look good, but uh, yeah, you can see what it does. And um, yeah, and as always, don't forget reset curve if you want to discard your changes. Now, the, fa the, the fancy thing here is you can also do that just on the red channel. You can just increase the red colors or decrease the red colors. Or the same goes for blue, more blue, uh, green, I'm sorry, green, less green. Okay, and let's once again reset the curve like this okay and um yeah as you can see if you take away red then you can see blue and green more strongly if you take away green you can see it becomes violet because it's red and blue mixed if you take away blue you can see it becomes like orangish because red and yellow gives you orange and now you could once again, you could also make the bright tones more blue and the dark tones less blue. Or the other way around, make the dark tones more blue and the light tones less blue. And this way you can get different um, moods into your scene, into your image. Um, yeah, but more on creating moods later because there's one other node that I think is even better for that. It's called the color balance node. But as I said, more on that in a second. Now, um, as I said, here you can zoom in and zoom out. Now, unfortunately, I did not find out how you can zoom in this area. So, this is fairly useless because, you can, as I said, you cannot really uh, move around there. So, I always have it like this. Because you really don't need to go into detail too much because uh, it, it, it doesn't need to be that exact. Next thing you can do is you can change how those are interpolated, okay? Right now we have um, auto handle. We can change it to vector handle, which then just gives us um, a sharp edge, okay? Same for over there, vector handle, okay? And now we can make some very extreme um, adjustments, which result in that, because you can really see here where, where, the gradient, where the gradient is usually taking place. Because of this sharp edge here, we now have a very sharp um, border between yellow and blue, which looks ridiculous, but it's still, it's, it, it, it can give you quite a, a funny effect, and maybe that's what you want at some point in an animation or in, a, in an image or whatever. So it's always good to know how those things work. Reset curve. And whenever you add a new one, I believe they are all always smooth handles, all, always auto handle, okay? Um, cool. Now, uh, once again, the factor amount. Now it's brighter, and if I turn the factor down, it becomes more and more like the original image. Okay, so this is also quite a good value to fine tune your RGB settings. Reset curve. Okay, now what is black level and white level? Essentially, whatever color you pick here is then the new black level. Okay. And whatever you color you pick here, it's a new white level. So right now, white is white and black is black. Now, if we change the white, um, the white level to, to red, completely red, you can see red basically disappears from your image because now everything that's been red before um, was just turned into uh, white. You can also do it with blue or with green. Or, of course, with a slightly less extreme um, color to make fi very, very fine adjustments. Or you can also do it with the black level. You have to first of all make it a bit brighter, and then you can actually also choose different colors. And the brighter you make the dark values, the darker your image gets, because more and more colors will be turned into black. And same goes for light. The darker you do that, the brighter you see, because more and more values become white. Until you screw it up, because of too much change there. Um, okay, and also one thing I didn't mention yet, in the compositor always, you can always right click on something and go to reset all to default value and then it becomes black again and same for over here. 
black as well. That's not what I want. Okay, sometimes the default values are not quite the way we want them. So. But also, for example, here, result default value, it becomes zero. Yeah, sometimes the default values are not what you um, expect them to be, but then you just have to change them manually. And then what else what you can do over here as well is you can change your view. You can say, for example, that um, the minimum in the x-axis is 0.5. Oops, 0.5. And now you can see, you have to go to reset view. And now you can see you're only changing things, you're only looking at um, what happens from 0.5 to 1 on the x-axis. On the y-axis, you still look, you still, you can still see everything from zero to one. Okay, that's also, and just because you can get some very cool results sometimes. I just like this one. It is a bit too dark, but I like how the glass looks over here, and well, the olives are way too dark. But yeah. Um, reset curve. Yes, sometimes it doesn't really work the way you think it should. Okay. Reset view and then we're back at originally. And you can see what happened. We only saw this part um, previously and now we can see everything again. So yeah, that's essentially what the RGB curves for. Um, you can, for example, use that if you have this image. Now let's just add in a color mix node, which will be the next one to cover. But just for fun, let's just make that completely red and let's just put that to 0.5 for example you can see we have this very red image and now if you want to get if we want to get the red out we can just set the black level the white level to something reddish and the black level to something reddish as well and then we should be in some way able to extract that red touch which we don't like though it doesn't work fairly well just now Here we go. Okay. You can see just make the black levels very red and you can get somewhat close to the original image again. So if you have like an image, for example, I don't know, you, you photograph a forest and everything is way too green, then just try to set the black level to something greenish and the white levels as well. And then that green will disappear a little bit and you can get a much clearer, much better image. Um, yeah, so that's the RGB curve. And now let's just, with Control X, or actually, let's just, yeah, with Control X delete that, let's re-add it, and let's put it into our color, our color nodes frame. Okay, next thing is mix. Oh, let's just put that back to white. Uh, or, yeah, back to white. Okay. Um, with the mix node, you can combine different images. Okay, so right now we just use this image over here and we combine it with white and what the modes that is actually quite important we have so many modes here okay so uh, let me just give you a short overview um, we have the output socket of course and the input socket whatever two input sockets actually one image a second image or just an rgb value and then they will be combined in some way and then that's the output then we have a preview and over here we have all the mix types we can mix two images according to different uh, algorithms basically and we can also decide how this is supposed to be viewed in the preview um, is it it should we use the alpha of the second input or not and then this is the factor how much influence this node has right now it has zero influence therefore nothing happens um, yeah so I'd like to talk about a few of them not, not, not about all of them because there are way too many and you don't need all of them anyway First of all, let's talk about mix. What mix does, it basically takes this image and then just um, puts this image over this one according to this value there, okay? So if I put that to one, you can see it's everything's white because it just takes the white color and just puts it over the previous image, which is not what we want. But you can say, go with 0.3, okay? And then it just becomes whiter. It's still ugly, but you can see what it does. You can also, as we did before, make the whole image a bit red, okay? <clears throat> although there are way better ways to make an image red, but this is just one of them, and so on. 
But what you can also do, you can also, let's just duplicate that. And let's just add in a, let's say, RGB curve, because we already know what that is. Uh, put that in there. And that in there. Let's connect that. And let's connect that first. What we have over here. And now let's just make this one way darker. Or let's just increase the contrast, actually. Let's like this. Okay. And now if we look over at this, you can see what happens. That's just zero. And now we can also as well mix them together until at one we only have this image over there. And um, yeah, that's what the mix does. What you can also do, we can also go to add and you can see everything becomes much brighter. Okay. So even, um, oh, and by the way, one last thing. If I just cut that out and put that back to one and that to mix, no matter what kind of color I have in here, okay, the mix node always does something. It always just adds that on top of it, unless this value is zero, okay? So, because usually for most nodes, you have like a default color that you should use as a second input in case there's no image there, so that the node doesn't do anything. But with mix, you don't have that, okay? It always does something. Now let's put it back to white. Okay, now with this. Um, actually, let's cut it again. Let's go to add. Now, what does add do? Um, a bit of color theory first. With mix, as you can see, it just put the, the color of the pixel from one image over the color of the pixel from the other image, okay? Now, add is different. Add doesn't put it over, but it adds it, okay? So if you have, uh, let's just go back to zero there. Let's say over here you have a value of, um, this is a green color, right? And it's a bit dark. So we have like, I don't know, um, uh, um, uh, a blue value of 0.3 and a yellow value of 0.3. Okay, and then also a bit of red. And that makes up this pixel. Now with add, I actually add another pixel onto that, okay? So it always becomes brighter than before because the higher the value, the brighter the image. And therefore, if I add in this image and put that to 1, you can see even though, even if we make this image there to be much darker, you can see the output in the end is brighter than the input, even though this image over here, yes, you can see, is much darker than the one we are adding it onto, okay? So add always brightens your scene. Therefore, if you want to add bright areas to an image, you have to use the add method. Okay, and one last thing, um, if, you, if you have a big compositor scene, then you want to make it so that if this add node has no input, then it doesn't do anything, okay? And therefore, you don't have to mute it all the time with M, for example. And you can do that by um, choosing a black value over here. And then you can see black has a value of zero, okay? Zero for red, green, and blue. And therefore, if you add zero onto something, it always stays the same value as before. And as I said before, this value is being completely ignored as soon as you input something else. And therefore, you can work like this. And if you want to look, if you, wanna, if you just have a scene where this is not used, you can see it doesn't do anything and it doesn't bother you at all. Um, yeah, although it does still use processing time, so it's better to just completely delete that node if you don't need it. But yeah, always, if you have an add node, Always set that to black unless you really want to use something else. Cool. Now the next thing is multiply. And you can see the exact opposite happened. We had a black input and it turned completely black because what it does now, it uses the pixel from the original image and multiplies it by whatever color the second image has. Now the second image has a color of black, which is zero. And if you multiply anything by zero, it becomes zero as well. Therefore, um, yeah, it becomes pitch black. Now, that's the reason why we always use white as our default color for the second input in the multiply, with the multiply blending mode, okay? Because now, whenever I insert something, you can see it becomes much darker. And it becomes even darker than the dark image we multiplied onto it, okay? Even if we use the default image, which is the same as over here, it becomes darker because um, let's say, for example, we look at this point over here. 
Okay, once again we have like um, green of 0.3, blue of no green of 0.3. I just noticed there's, there's no yellow in lights. Anyway, green of 0.3, blue of 0.3, or something like that. And then we multiply that by itself, then it becomes darker because 0.3 multiplied by 0.3 becomes just about a 0.1, and therefore it's darker than before. And you can see it is indeed much darker than before. And that is the multiply mode, okay? So every, whenever you have a dark areas that you want to add onto or just to multiply onto another image, you have to use multiply. Uh, like, for example, if you have additional shadows that you want to add onto another image, if you want to add the shadow path, so to say, you use multiply. Then subtract is something you basically never use. But it's quite obvious if you have one image and if you subtract the exact same image, then it becomes black because you always have the same values extracted from each other. Um, but now if you make that uh, brighter, it doesn't really do anything. Let me just see. Oh, here. If you make that one darker, then um, its value becomes smaller. And therefore, if you subtract it from the other image, it has less of less effect, okay? So the darker the, the image that is being subtracted, the brighter your actual scene. Until then it becomes black if it's the exact same. And over there, if it's even brighter, then you just um, subtract it into the um, negative, into negative values, which is black as well. Um, yeah, and for, for subtract, of course, as well, if you use white then everything becomes black because you will subtract one from everything and if this is set to black nothing happens because you're subtracting zero and therefore it has no effect at all and then also quite um cool is screen because they are kind of like um subtracted from each other and then multiplied again and yeah, it's quite weird but what it, what it does it's actually quite simple uh, similar to add in a way you can see add and you can see screen uh yeah but screen is always a bit more uh, evened out in a way. Uh, yeah, and then one last thing is, yeah, darken just darkens the image, lighten just lights it, and the difference is kind of, it always subtracts one image from the other so that the resulting value is still positive, and so on and so forth. There are lots of lots of different ways. Uh, I added a, a two links actually, one link to the uh, Blender wiki on mix notes and one link to the wikipedia article on blend modes yeah there just so you can look it up if you need something um okay so let's just delete that let's delete that and let's delete that not let's just move that over there as well for screen so next node is hue saturation value and now let's just move that there let's move that in between so what is hue saturation value? The easiest way to show you that is by opening up some kind of color wheel like this one. Okay. Cool. Now there are different ways to navigate around that. We talked about that before. First is RGB. You just choose a red value, a green value, and a blue value, and then you get a combined value. Okay. But you can also use HSV, which stands for hue, saturation, and value. So the hue is basically where it is on this circle, okay? It just circles around uh, this color wheel, okay? From red to green to blue to red again. And then S is basically the saturation, okay? How red is it? Or how green is it? Or how blue is it? Okay? And the value is kind of how bright it is. Like this. Okay, and um, it looks a bit weird over here because this is just two-dimensional. But essentially, um, the color wheel is basically a three-dimensional cylinder, okay? And the value is basically how high up it is on this three-dimensional cylinder. Um, let me just see if I can find that on Wikipedia real quick. Uh, let me just pause the recording. And I found it. And here it is. And here you can see... Um, this is actually this color cylinder, okay? So we, we talk about the saturation which goes, which goes from the center to the more saturated um, colors, then the hue that, that goes in the circle, switching between the colors, and then the value from dark to bright, okay? And that, that, that uh, translation from dark to bright is actually 
um, the one over here. So this is kind of like the third dimension here. And you can also adjust that over here. So right now, you can see what we have. We have our original image. And if we change the hue, then you can guess what happens. All the colors are being changed quite drastically, actually. You can see what happens. The, this becomes orange. The green stays more or less green. And you can see quite soon you get quite extreme results which, once again, might be good to demonstrate what it looks like if you are an LSD or something, but it's not really something you want to play with to get a good image, okay? But maybe very slight changes might help in some cases. I, I don't usually use the hue, but you never know. And then the saturation is also quite, quite obvious. It just saturates your image. Um, all the colors become more dominant. You can see the wine is more red, the olives, they are nearly glowing, and all the way down it's just a gray image, okay? Which is one way of desaturating your image in Blender. Put it back to, I guess, one. Okay. And then we also have value, and that just makes it brighter. It's similar to brightness, but it's better. If you just want to make your image brighter, you should go with value because it's basically the best way of just increasing the brightness of your scene. Um, okay, and then as always, let's say we have a very drastic change here. The factor, zero, nothing happens, and then the further you go, um, yeah, the more it's, it influences your scene. Now, if you want to animate such a change, and you want to animate hue, saturation, and value, then instead of changing all those values, you can just use the factor, which is easier to control. But less accurate, of course, because you cannot control the things separately. Or one. So yeah, this is basically already it for hue, saturation, and value. Um, yeah, saturation can give you quite cool results, re cool results sometimes to make... It, it is kind of similar to contrast, especially then combined with value, and yeah, you can do a lot of cool things with that. So let's just cut that out and let's move it onto our collection of color nodes as well. Then the next thing is the brightness and contrast, which is something we just talked about. Now what does that do? We only have two things to adjust here. We have brightness and contrast. And if you change the brightness, then the values of all the pixels just become more and more towards white, okay? But it loses the contrast. If you move that all the way up, you can see it becomes whiter and whiter and whiter. And at some point, it's really just white. Or you make it darker. You can see what happens there. It is brighter and brighter and all this. And yeah, usually this doesn't really do much. Or it doesn't really help. But it can help uh, combined with contrast. Okay, the higher your contrast, the... Uh, yeah, the darker the dark values and the brighter the bright values, as I showed you just before with the um, RGB curves. Now, in order to keep that from becoming so dark, you can use the brightness and change that back again a little bit. But then it's essentially just like not using it at all, because if you put that to zero, zero, you can see we're once again at the default uh, previous original image. Um, yeah, you, you, you can use the brightness a little bit to make things darker, maybe. It is quite good to make things darker, but not so much for making it brighter. And also, decreasing the brightness has kind of a similar effect to as increasing the contrast, okay? So they, they kind of um, compensate for each other. If you increase the contrast and the brightness as well, to a similar value. Oh, and one thing, uh, brightness is kind of like stronger, okay? So if you want them to compensate each other, you need to set the brightness at like 0.4 and contrast at like 8, okay? If you have that at 20, you can put that at 40 and they more or less, you can see what happens. But it is much brighter than before, than at 0. Okay, so yeah, that is brightness and contrast for you. Let's cut that out as well. I mean, most of you know what brightness and contrast is already anyway. Now let's connect that again to the viewer output with Control shift left click and let's now add the next node which is Gamma. And Gamma is something used for color correction um, on different screens and stuff usually. And for example, 
um, I think Windows screens usually have like uh, a, a gamma value of 2.2 and Macintosh values had a value of 1.8 but now have one of 2.2. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it is. It, it, it's kind of, I think 1.8 is better um, if you are not working with color management and 2.2 is something else used for some, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, what we do with gamma basically in Blender is we use it for final um, lighting corrections, okay? So the darker your, uh, the lower your gamma, the brighter you seem. And you can really see this is not just um, brighter like it was with the brightness contrast. This is actually like relighting it in a way, okay? And you can also make it a bit darker without really losing any, any other detail, okay? And now with, you sh by the way, one uh, other important thing. You shouldn't, you should never make too drastic changes with your post-production if you want to just create a um, pleasing, um, normal post-processing results. You should only make fine adjustments, so if your scene is way too bright, just putting that to like 3 is not really the way to go. You can see it starts to look fake quite soon. So you should make the major adjustments in your 3D viewport with the lights and so on, and then only make fine-tuning fine adjustments in your compositor. But you can see the higher it is, uh, the darker it looks basically, and the lower it is, the brighter. Okay, that was a bit too low. And you can see it works fine in those last few, uh, for those first few um, changes up to there. And then at some point it starts to give you that, this harsh, ugly looking st stuff. Or same goes for over here, it looks fine in the beginning, but then at some point it just becomes too dark. And if you didn't, if you didn't yeah. To there. It can be a cool result if you really want to go for this type of scene, for whatever reason that would be, but usually it's not what you want. Um, oh, wrong. So yeah. And one other thing to note, which just came to mind, is you can see you can only go to 0 0.001, not to 0. And that usually indicates this is a value that is like divided, okay? It's like 1 over something. And if you go to 0.001 is like 1 over 1000, and then you can kind of see how this works. And that's also what we, why um, from 0 to 1, it's this much change, but to 1 from 1 to 2, it's not that big of a change. And from 2 to 5, it's also not that big of a change. The biggest change is from 0, or from 0 0.001 to 1. And yeah, that's kind of how this works. Um, yeah, I also added a link in the description box, video description, um, about gamma correction and also about contrast, by the way. Although contrast is quite self-explaining, it's quite simple. Okay, so let's also cut out our gamma node and let's move it into our collection as well. Let's just delete that over here. Okay, I accidentally duplicated it. Now, the next thing we have here is invert. And that is indeed fairly simple as well. Um, most of you guys know this effect, I'm pretty sure. And then you can see it just inverts the whole image. Um, whatever is like reddish becomes bluish, whatever is like bluish becomes reddish, orangish, and so on. Now, in, for this type of scene, it doesn't work at all. But yeah, it's kind of sometimes it's kind of cool if you're um, working on a logo for someone, and then you're just thinking, huh, how would that look with other colors? And then you can just throw in an invert node, and you have a first idea on how it would look. Um, in blue instead of red, okay. Of course, it's not quite a final image, but it's good for looking at it. And you can also invert the alpha. Now, in this, in with this image, we do not have an alpha. We will talk more about alphas um, in one of the next few nodes. And then once again, the factor, zero, nothing happens. And then you can see at 5.5, 5, we have no color at all because it kind of, um, it's, it's exactly in the middle. So it's halfway between one color and it's opposite, therefore it's pretty much just um, nothing, just gray. And then it's, you start to see the inverted image. Um, yeah, so this is the invert node. I, usually you don't use that for RGB values, you just use it for black and white values when um, working with alphas and some other compositing techniques that I will show you later. So let's move that to over there as well. I once again duplicated it, let's delete it. Okay, and I just decided that I won't, I'll make a second tutorial for um, 
alpha over and c combine because there we need we, we need a different scene for those and we'll then also once again talk about the mix node okay um, so for now let's jump to the next thing that actually concerns itself with uh, color changing that is the color balance node and now this is probably my favorite node it is very very great you can see you have three color wheels you have lift gamma and gain now lift is basically the dark tones okay with this color wheel you can adjust all the tones that are quite dark in this uh, in this image with gamma you can change or influence all the colors that are quite in the middle like the mid-tones and the high the very high bright tones are over here on the uh, gain channel and you have a separate set of channels with offset power and slope more on that in a second let's first of all talk about those um, the factor quite self-explaining once again this node doesn't do anything now and now it does everything it's 100% active now uh, I actually also use this color balance node to actually um, get this final render here and you can do very cool things if you change the dark tones to blue then that's what you get you can see a very subtle change but it only influences some of the some of the parts of your image not all of them that is quite important um, same goes for the midtones. If I change the midtones to be green, you can see what happens. Um, the midtones usually have the slightest, the smallest effect, especially if you use um, the dark and the high tones. But also, you can also use them as well. They are also quite important, of course. And then finally, the the, the bright tones have also quite a drastic influence on what your final image looks like. Okay. And one thing that's quite important here, you can get quite a cool, let's just reset all to default value, like this. You can get pretty professional results when using opposites here, okay? So for example, you use um, a dark blue, a very bluish tone in the dark tones, and then a very yellowish tone in the bright tones, and you see they kind of cancel each other out while still changing um, the image. You, you then have kind of like a similar feel as you have to the image as in the beginning, but it's just more, yeah, it just looks nicer, kind of hard to explain. And also quite cool is if you use all three colors, let's see. Now here in this scene, it doesn't really look too good, but this way you get a quite a natural, you can get quite a natural feel to your image. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just play around with those. Um, we will use them in our in this tutorial of course as well about how to create this scene which is the first tutorial series as i said before and then also in future tutorials because this is quite this is quite an important node um yeah one tip i can give you right now is if you have any gradients okay now this gradient here is a bit too weak it should be even darker out here and even brighter in here but if it's such a gradient effect then with the dark tones, you obviously influence only the dark parts, with the mid-tones, the mid-parts, and with the high tones, bright tones, the bright parts. And then you can get this very cool, those very cool gradient effects. Um, yeah, let me just... Yeah, we can try to do that by adding in a um, RGB curve here. Let's make everything much... Not darker, but more, con more rich in contrast like this okay you can see this 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 thing going on over there and now let's also desaturate the image um duration value so it's just gray okay and now you can exactly see what happens um bright tones mid tones dark tones now if you make the dark tones very blue you can see how blue it becomes the bright tones very yellowish and then the mid-tones somewhat greenish. And you can see this gradient effect happening there. And with that, you can create very cool results. Um, uh, now, this is a bit too much. Let's just turn that down a little bit there. And you can see what this looks like, those gradient effects. And they, with those, you can, for example, um, influence lens flares and stuff like that. More on that later, but just so you know what you can do with those things. Um, okay, so let's just cut that out as well. And, oh boy, this kind of needs a lot of space here. Let's put it over there as well. Now let's delete those again. And now let's add in 
um, hue correct. Now, for those of you who have worked with um, a DAV before, a digital audio workstation for creating music, you will know that this looks quite a bit like an equalizer, and it is actually quite a similar thing. So let's just, what did I do there? Connect that to our viewer node, and then let's see, let's see what we can do here. Okay, with, oh, let's just drop it in there. With each point on this line, you can actually influence how much one of those colors appear in your scene, okay? So for example, let's go with blue. You can see you have uh, some blue areas over here, you have a blue area over here, and some blue areas over there. Now if you increase blue, you can see how the blue tones are enforced. And you know the kind of effect that gave us just now is this very saturated blue and also it looks like the table is more reflective than before in a way and then you can also go with um, red for example let's increase the red and you can see what happens that's not quite a preferred uh, a preferable change here with those banding issues um, but you can for example try this one you can see what happens here you can see a change also on the red part of the olive um, yeah, and then you can also say, for example, you want to change the green colors, which are somewhere like there. You can see the olives. Although they are not really that much affected by it, I don't really know why. It's a bit difficult to work with this, especially if you're not used to it. I and mean, then you can also see this is probably like a pinkish color if I change that all the way up. Okay, it isn't. Yeah, you can see what it does. It just enforces those particular colors in your scene. And actually, I quite liked how the blue parts are be were being enforced by this hue correct. And um, let's just reset that to reset curve. Okay, you can see that drastic change we, we could achieve in such a sh short amount of time. And now we were always talking about the saturation. That was the saturation. You can also go with the hue, okay? But this is quite hard to control and quite hard to imagine. Um, right now, if we change this red part, you can see the red will become green, in a way, or yellowish or something. And therefore, it's quite weird, and I, I never really use the hue correct on the hue, actually. I always use it on saturation or value. You can see it is fairly strange, but this we were able to quite simply, quite, quite easily change the color of those olives. Not that they look good now, but you know what I mean. And you can also quite easily change, for example, the color of that wine, probably. Let's just try something. You can see now we have a weird wine. Yeah, it doesn't really look like wine anymore, and so on and so forth. You can do lots of cool things with those, but as I said, usually I don't use the hue, just saturation. Now let's just reset that again. And as you might remember, oh, come on. What the value does, it just brightens or makes it less bright. So if you change the red tones, you can see everything red becomes brighter. If you change like the green tones over here, then your olives become a bit brighter. If you change that part, you can see those areas become brighter. And this we can very uh, accurately brighten up just one area. All the, all the blue tones, as you can see over here. And um, the problem is that, as I said, you need to practice this because it's quite hard to get control over this. I wouldn't say I'm pretty good at it either. But with this, you can really fine-tune your scene, but it also takes a bit of time. So that's your hue correct. And as always, with the factor amount, you can influence how much this node actually influences your scene. Okay. And now the last one to color cover in this is to tone map. Um, let me tell you first what the tone map is uh, usually used for. As you might know, we have, there are HDR images, high dynamic range images, um, as opposed to low dynamic range images, like all the JPEG and PNG Im images you know. Because with low dynamic range, you usually have values from 0 to 1, okay? And therefore, white is just 1 for R, G, and B, and 0 is just black for, uh, it's just 0 for R, G, and B is just black. And this way you have like that range. But now imagine you have a white piece of paper next to a lamp, okay? And you take a photograph. And then you load your photograph into your computer and you can see the white image, uh, the white paper, generates an RGB value of one each, which 
results in white. And the lamp you photographed, and obviously we, we all know that a lamp is much, much brighter than, than, the, than the paper, also has the value of 1, okay? So, um, let me just try to find an image here on the internet. Give me just a second. Um, okay, I just found an image on the internet. It's not quite ideal, but it does its job. You can see this lamp here. And you can see, obviously, this lamp is on right now, okay? You can see this is, a, is white, okay? Because it's a very bright lamp that shines into your eyes and burns. And then the surrounding area, which is not a lamp, is also white, okay? But it, it, this should be much less white because it doesn't really illuminate anything. This is just the scene around it. Of course, this is just um, a white plane that is um, put behind the lamp, but you can see what I mean. If I would use this scene, okay, as an environment map to actually light um, an object in my scene, in my 3D scene, then um, that object would be lit by the same amount, whether by the same amount from this actual lamp and from the environment, we don't want that. And in an HDR image, there's a difference between white and white. And that's what an HDR image is for. But you need to then um, bring that back to your low dynamic range if you want to have an image to put at your desktop screen or whatever, if you want to generate a JPEG. And that's what the tone map is for. Um, but you can, now you can use that to insert, input um, um, uh, an HDR image into your scene, into your compositor, if you want to work with HDR images in your compositor, or you can just use it to um, deal with overexposed scenes, okay? So right now, let's just connect it to the viewer output, and you can see um, this, in my opinion, this is not really overexposed at all, but we can change that. Brightness, contrast, and now you can see brightness or Brightness of, no, we cannot just work with the, okay, that's just the wrong node. Let's go with a hue saturation value. That's much better. Drop that, drop that in there. And now let's change the value to 1.5. And now it is overexposed, maybe 1.7. Now it is really overexposed. And now by adding in this tone map, you can see what happens. It gets, um, the problem is kind of being solved of this overexposure, but it also looks a bit bit weird and a bit um, flat and without to, uh, enough contrast. Now we could just add in a contrast node, which would kind of then revert that effect and so on. But we can also use uh, use those options in here. Now we have two different types of tone map to tone map: um, RH sample and RD photoreceptor. And then you have uh, several different um, values to change: intensity. which kind of just makes everything brighter or less bright, okay? But you can see it already looks a bit better. Nowhere near as good as the original, but you can see, it, yeah, it's just like that. And then you can also change the contrast, okay? But here it doesn't really behave the way you're used to from the contrast node, okay? It's a bit different, um, but essentially quite similar. Um, yeah, but now you can see, just at about there, we are quite close to the original image, I guess. Let me just see. Okay, we're not at all, but um, it's better than before. And then we also have adaption. And if we change that all the way to zero, now we're even closer, as you can see. Still quite a bit away. Then we also have color correction. Color correction was what I wanted to say. And I just think that doesn't change too much in this scene right here. Yeah, I must admit I don't work with tone up quite often as well, but you can see what it does. And then we have RH simple. And actually I think RH simple is well more simple to use in a way. The key um kind of changes the brightness, okay? And you can see it never really looks overexposed. Uh never really looks flat or without enough contrast if even if you change that down. So I th I'm quite a fan of RH Simple, and now if you ch compare that to the original, it is quite similar. It isn't quite as great though. Um, we could also work with Gamma here, Th and oh, this is also weird a bit. If you change the Gamma in RH Simple, then the more Gamma you have, the brighter it becomes, the less the darker. Okay, and if you uh, remember back with the Gamma node, there's the other way around. With the Gamma node, the less Gamma, the brighter, the more Gamma, the darker. Um, yeah, now this looks nothing like it, uh, 0.6, okay. 
Once again, as I said before, you should try to achieve great results in your render, in your 3D viewport with the light sources already, so you don't have to do too much post-processing then in the, in the compositor. And then we also have the offset. Um, the higher the offset, the darker everything, the lower, the brighter. Okay. Yeah, and this way you can kind of um, cancel out um, overexposure of your, in your images. So that is the tone map node. Um, now we are pretty much done here for this tutorial. Let's just add that in there as well. Actually, let's just do something. Let's call that color notes one. And let's call it appearance because it actually changes how your images appear. And then let's just duplicate that. And let's call the second one two and combine. Because with the color notes we're going to add in here, it's only about three or so. We'll then actually, um, you, uh, we can actually combine images. And yeah, the mix node is kind of an exception. You can use that to, to change the appearance or to mix or to combine images. So we already have that there. I'll delete that as well. And um, okay, so that's essentially it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions or comments or whatever, feel free to post them in the comment section below each video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.